Hello, I'm Stuart Eglin. I'm Director of NHS R&D Northwest. This is the second podcast series. In the first series, we interviewed people who are research leaders here in the northwest of England, and we called that the Research Champions. This series is called Edge Walkers because we're interviewing people who walk the edge of organisations, challenge the status quo, and are uh, working towards improvement of the health system here in the northwest. I hope you enjoy the films. I think my area of interest chose me, actually. <laughs> um, I uh, studied politics at university and I left that with a real intent to be a journalist, um, but um, actually fell into working in Parliament. Um, and it was whilst I was working in Westminster and Whitehall um, for a few years that I then went to work for uh, a health research charity, which is the Alzheimer's Society. And I think that's where I really began to see um, and become excited about the things that I could do working in a, in a sort of environment that was working with patients and carers and uh, people who, who were committed to a cause. Um, and it was whilst I was at the Alzheimer's Society that it began to develop its approach um, to involving the public in research, which is, was a, you know, leading then, it, it remains a leading approach to involving people in research. So, so, and I think that again, sort of, I began to, to be drawn to that because it was so interesting and exciting about democratising something that had been quite closed to the public up until up until that point. So, uh, in terms of a professional mentor, I've been very lucky. I've had fantastic chief execs and chairs that I've worked with over the years, but perhaps the one that's been most important to me um, and continues to be so as a, as a personal friend is Harry Caton. And Harry Caton was the chief exec at the Alzheimer's Society when I worked there in the 90s. Uh, but I think you, you take a lot of tutelage and um, are extraordinarily influenced by those first bosses that you have. Uh, and his set of values and principles and his integrity um, is just in, it just shines through. And I think I think I was very infected with that. I think I've always tried to model that. I don't. I would never pretend that I've succeeded, but I would say I hope I've tried to model that to some extent. I think the second person is my my wife Nikki, and she comes from a learning and development background. So she, so she's very good, I think, at giving me a mirror to hold up against myself and think, oh, well, that's I take quite an analytical approach um, to why things are happening in the world or of work or, or not. So she's extremely influential to me, I think, in how I approach things now. The episode that um, had the most impact on me, I think, so far in my career was at the end of the 90s, I worked in the United States for three years for Procter & Gamble. What I took from there is a real open-mindedness. So let me give you a sort of example of what I mean by that. So if you said to someone uh, in the UK, I mean I'm generalising a lot, but if you said to someone in the UK, I want to be an astronaut, you know, they'd say to you, oh that's ridiculous, you know, you can't do that, you're 35 and you know, you don't be stupid, go and do something else, you know, you can't attain that. If you said that to someone in America, they say, what a way to go, how are you going to do that? How are you going to re you know, you reach that goal? They would be positive and encouraging and, and, and they wouldn't stand in your way and they're full of, they wouldn't put their philosophy or their judgment in your way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, my career has really been about campaigning, and so uh, campaigning is about challenging, and it's about challenging uh, the status quo. Uh, it's more about challenging the status quo than challenging uh, whether things are going right, because I think uh, underlying it is a is a desire to challenge the status quo, because you want to improve things, and you want to develop things, and I think there is a danger that if you stand still, uh, you become irrelevant and you start to become poor in terms of quality um, and, uh, and what you're trying to do. But I also think it's important to challenge and to, uh, in terms of scrutinising and uh, asking serious questions about decisions and how they've arisen. And fundamentally, that's 
what public involvement in research is about. It's about enabling citizens to ask questions of scientists and clinicians and government about why have they taken certain decisions about research and why haven't they been part of that decision. So I think challenge is a really, really important thing. Oh, I saw that question <laughs> and I thought lo uh, um, long and hard about that. Well, I, I mean, I, obviously I would include family in that. And if you <laughs> so, but I think my best supporters are the people who, who work with and alongside me in public involvement. I'm not saying that they're out there supporting Simon Denegree, but um, we wouldn't be doing the things that we're doing or getting the work done that we needed to. We wouldn't be having the creative thought, actually, um, uh, without them. Uh, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, of those people. So I feel that though they're the best supporters. Uh, I think for me as a, as a leader is that they, um, it's important that they increasingly feel empowered and enabled and that they're, uh, you know, I'm not going to be doing this forever, that there are a legion of other leaders uh, to take my place in the place of, place of others. So they have to be, I think, my, my best supporters. And I think, they're, I think they're a wonderful community to work with. I mean, I really do enjoy working with them. They're just fabulous people and they've got so much energy. Um, we can irritate one another at times. Um, I know we can and have big disagreements, but we're fundamentally, I think, very focused and quite clear about what we actually want at the end of the day.